The average person is said to spend 15 minutes in the bathroom. Why not take advantage of that time and learn something new? Presenting the 15-minute podcast on weird facts, crazy details, and funny particulars that you'll be able to enjoy while you're taking a sh- Well, on your free time. Welcome to The Shit with Sam Butler. Welcome to another episode of The Shit Podcast. Uh, uh, I'm uh, happy to be here, episode 103. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. Please um, like, subscribe to our channel, hit the notifications bell, and with that, we'll get started. I'm uh, kind of interested in this topic. Uh, I thought I would share it with y'all. Uh, I read an article about it, and I was fascinated by the whole idea of it. But um, a couple of episodes back, we talked about the real Hannibal Lecter and um, how he was a Mexican doctor and how the character wasn't exactly the same as the character in the movie, but the basis for the character was developed by this doctor. Well, while I was researching that, I came across another article that talked about Dexter. Now, I don't know if you all are familiar with Dexter, but uh, it was a series on Showtime, I believe, um, in the 2005 to 2007 era. I'm not sure exactly. Um, I watched the show. Um, if you don't know what the show is, uh, I was I kind of had mixed emotions about watching the show, but you know how it happens, uh, especially like during the pandemic, we had nothing to do but watch stuff. So I decided to go ahead and watch the series. And like I said, I had mixed emotions because I do believe that we live in a society that glorifies violence. And uh, I do believe that that's why we're having a lot of the problems that we're having today with violence especially with like school shootings and and um, feminicides and everything else that you can talk about. We glorify violence through a lot of the things that we watch. That being said, this was a very fascinating premise. If you know anything about the show Dexter, or if you don't know anything about the show Dexter, this is, uh, I'll, I'll sum it up for you. Dexter is a, an adopted kid that um, is adopted by a policeman and his wife. And uh, early in, in, in this kid's a you know early life, the dad starts to notice that the kid has some homicidal tendencies. Uh, he's abusing animals. He's he's uh, cutting animals up. He's he's uh, showing all the signs of a potential um, serial killer. Now the dad, being a trained policeman, uh, identifies all these. Uh, different things, but he loves, he's conflicted. He loves his kid, but his kid is also this uh, potential criminal. So this is when the dad comes up with the bright idea that he would allow the kid to to deal with his urges, but they would create a code. And in this code, he was allowed to to go kill people as long as the people deserve to die. So this is the thing that kind of catches you in the show because you're going like, well, he's killing, but he's killing people that deserve it. So that is the premise for the show. And of course, Dexter becomes a, a forensic, uh, I want to say pathologist, but he becomes one of the CSI guys for the police department because that's the way he's able to kind of cover his tracks. He's very meticulous in what he does. And he has like a checklist of things the person has to uh, fall under to deserve to die. And this is wh what leads us to who the character was based on. And um, although this particular serial killer lived in, in real life, it's not necessarily um, the same exact MO. But we're going to talk about Pedro Rodriguez Filo, who's actually a serial killer out of uh, Brazil. And um, the character Dexter... Dexter Morgan is loosely based on this particular killer. Now, he was born, uh, Pedro Rodriguez Filo was born July 17th, 1954. He was known as Pedrino el Matador, or in English, Killer Petey. Um, he, was, uh, he would pursue and kill other criminals. And he was sentenced uh, uh, for 71 murders, but he claims that he killed about 100. He served 42 years in prison before his release in 2018, and his victims included 47 people who he murdered inside the prisons, which 
he was imprisoned. So um, here's a kid who has these serial killer tendencies. He finds he finds himself um, killing at a very young age. He kills for the first time at 13. He gets um, he doesn't kill at 13. He he uh, kind of shows signs of being a killer at 13 because he gets into a fight with a cousin, uh, gets really upset, and he tries to throw his kid into like a sugar cane press. Yeah, and you know this is his cousin. He throws his cousin to a sugar cane press. He didn't die. Uh, the cousin didn't die, but he was mangled pretty bad. At age 14, he killed the deputy mayor of Santa Rita, uh, Do Sapakui. I'm saying that very wrong, but he shot him with a shotgun that belonged to his grandfather. He shot him in front of the city hall for having fired his father, a school guard who was accused of stealing food from the school kitchen. He then killed a security guard who he suspected as the actual thief. So Rodriguez took, um, he, he takes off. He goes to Mogi das Cruces uh, in Greater Sao Paulo, where he begins robbing and uh, drug nuns. So this guy actually starts robbing drug dealers and killing the traffickers. He then meets Maria Aprecia Olimpia, nicknamed Botina, and they began living together. Rodriguez took on the duties of the deceased and as soon as was forced to eliminate some rivals. So he kills drug dealers and then he himself becomes a drug dealer and then he finds himself having to kill again because now he has rivals. So he killed three of his ex-cronies. So he killed three of his own partners. Botina, his girl, becomes pregnant but then was killed by a rival gang leader. And of course, at this time, he's still underage and he escaped. He then later, later recruited some soldiers, set up his own business, and then went out on revenge to avenge his uh, uh, deceased girlfriend and his unborn baby. Um, the rival um, then was then betrayed by his ex-wife. He receives a visit from Rodriguez and four of his friends during a wedding party. Rodriguez wasn't even 18 years old. Uh, in Mogi, he killed his father, his own father, with 21 machete blows in a city jail for killing his mother. Uh, in addition to 22 stab wounds, he ripped out his father's heart, chewed it apart, and spat it out. And um, this is all according to different interviews. So he was arrested for the first time on the 24th of May, 1973, and he lived in prison most of his adult years. Now, while he was en route to the prison, uh, there was another prisoner with him, and he went ahead and killed that guy. Uh, and he did it without the transport uh, personnel noticing, but when they opened up the paddy wagon, they realized that the other guy was dead, and he said he did it because the man was a rapist. So he would take other people's crimes very personally. He was sentenced to 126 years in prison. He was supposed to be released in 2003 because in Brazil, you could only serve a maximum of 30 years behind bars. They've changed that. In 2019, they changed it, so now you can serve 40 years behind bars. Um, so he committed um, so many crimes inside prison that he was incarcerated. He was sentenced to another 400 years. And uh, until 2017... He had the opportunity to redo his life because he was released from prison. Uh, he had a new girlfriend. His girlfriend um, remained anonymous, but uh, they met through correspondence and she would visit him. Well, he goes ahead and kills his prison cellmate. Uh, not so much because the guy was a murderer, but because the guy was watching them during a conjugal visit. And he went ahead and did this. Um, he stayed in prison for 34 years, um, and on September 25th, 2011, uh, they reported that he was arrested at his rural home, so he gets out in 2007, and in 2011, he gets arrested again, uh, where he worked, you know, he had, he lived out on the farm, he, he, he was a caretaker, and uh, he was arrested again for murder. So, this was a, a, a guy who didn't mind killing 
And it's very interesting because he was he always felt justified in his killing, which is which is pretty much the basics uh, of or, or the uh, outline of that character, Dexter Morgan. Uh, it was a justified killing. Although killing is wrong, but he actually had a tattoo that says, I kill for pleasure. I mean, so uh, we can see. That's very interesting that uh, this gentleman actually felt justified in killing and was a, a psych psychopathic serial killer. What's more interesting is that he finally got out in 2018 and um, lives free. And he actually was interviewed by a podcast not too long ago. Uh, and, you know, he states why he believed he had to kill. That's that's the story of Pedro Rodriguez Filo. Now, that's one. That's that's the character that ba they base Dexter on. Something that's very interesting is that there was a case in Canada um, where there where uh, post Dexter, um, there's a, a Canadian filmmaker, and uh, he was inspired by Dexter and decided to do the same thing, uh, kill, and he felt justified in killing. And it, it, it's pretty crazy how uh, life imitates art. Uh, we have a Canadian filmmaker uh, out of Edmonton, Canada, and he's posing on, uh, on different media sites to be a woman, and he's luring men into his garage, and then uh, he actually ended up killing someone. Uh, he had set up his garage with all of the plastic sheathing, just like in the in the TV show. And uh, Edmonton police uh, discover that he has a, a hard drive, and in his hard drive he has a, a file that had been deleted, and it was pretty much confessions of uh, his murders and all the different crimes that he committed. And uh, he states that that he didn't necessarily uh copy dexter that this was just his urge but he was a filmmaker that was making a film about luring people into garages but in his mind um he would uh lure them there they would find out he wasn't the woman and then they would run away and this would make for an interesting movie and he ends up uh, getting into a fight with one of the guys and ends up killing him and then cutting him into pieces and putting him into a barrel so it's very interesting how there's a, a, an inspiration for the serial killer based in Brazil. Uh, the TV show comes out, uh, the series, which the last uh, uh, season just uh, came out last year, you know, and uh, it's like the last final season of Dexter. And, and now we have an example of a gentleman in, um, in uh, Canada that uh, does the same thing. Um, murders people. And so what does this say uh, as a society? I, I know that that uh, I talked about it a little bit at the beginning, but um, I do think that, that uh, we have a lot of issues <laughs> as a society. We glorify violence. We uh, entertain ourselves with this kind of violence. And um, it's something that we should think about. I mean, um, all the stuff that's happening uh, in both countries, the United States and Mexico, it, it makes you wonder, like, um, are we encouraging people to, to do certain things? Are we not encouraging people to do certain things? Uh, are, are we in a fragile society? I don't know. But what I do know is that um, so, uh, I feel a little bit of guilt. I don't know if you guys can share this with me. I feel a little bit of guilt in enjoying the series because Dexter was a very well written series, but at the same time, you you got to wonder, you know, what are you what are you putting into your mind, into your heart? And with that, um, we'll wrap up this episode of the shit pod, of the shit podcast. But you know, guys, um, it's tough out there. Be safe. Make sure you loved your you hug your loved ones. You tell them you love them. Make sure that uh, we don't. Uh, and I'm getting a little preachy here, but. We, we need to keep kind of an eye on this stuff for our own mental health, for our own uh, well-being. And I hope you guys the best. I love you guys very much. Thank you for supporting the podcast. Uh, please leave your comments, your thoughts, anything that you might want to say about this topic. Uh, like I said, I'm getting a little preachy, but it is, it is something that uh, is, is, is to, to ponder, to think of.
So with that being said, that wraps up this episode. Thank you guys, and we'll catch you next week.